Hi, my name is JC. In April of 2022, I was diagnosed with SIRS, aka Chronic Inflammatory Response Syndrome, aka Mold Illness, aka Biotoxin Illness. The thing that really sold me on SIRS when I was diagnosed was the clinically proven path to success. There is a clinically proven protocol that you can follow to help eliminate SIRS. Personally, I was diagnosed in April of 2022. I started treatment in June of 2022. As of the filming of this video, I have six months of treatment under my belt, and it's a night and day difference for me. When I started treatment, I was in chronic pain, majorly depressed, had a myriad of really weird symptoms, and today I am feeling so much better. I am pain-free. I am out of depression. I no longer experience most of those symptoms. I still have a little bit of residual stuff left, but I still have more of the treatment protocol to go. Since I was diagnosed, I've done a lot of research. I read the textbook, I watched all the webinars, and while I'm not a provider, I do hope that by sharing this information and targeting it towards SIRS patients, that more people will understand SIRS and potentially see it as the hope for healing that I have. So SIRS happens when someone who is genetically predisposed to being really bad at eliminating a biotoxin encounters that biotoxin. I've done a couple of videos about what is SIRS and what are biotoxins, so definitely check out those videos if you're looking for more information. Today, I want to talk about the treatment protocol, specifically the Shoemaker protocol, which is the only clinically proven path to eliminating biotoxin and clearing the residual issues left over from SIRS. The protocol has 12 steps in total, but the steps that you take will be determined by your symptoms and your blood work. There are three necessary steps that everyone practically, like, I think everyone has to do them. Um, but then the rest of the steps are actually determined by your symptoms and your blood work. So when you're looking at the protocol, it might be like, whoa, that's a lot of steps, but you may not need to take every step of the protocol. The first step is to remove the exposure. So for people who have mold biotoxin haplotypes, that can look like moving away from the environment they're in, changing jobs, or even remediating the environment. I'll go ahead and leave a link down below for a really great resource for remediation. For people who suffer from the Lyme haplotype, you may have to treat your Lyme disease before you can treat SIRS. If you go to survivingmold.com, there's a bunch of Shoemaker certified providers there. They all have to submit an essay kind of giving their uh, philosophical position on treatment, but they also have different specialties. So you may want to find someone who has a Lyme specialty, for example. The next step is taking the binders. Now this is a really important note. Biotoxins are very specifically charged and you need a specific receptor site size to grab onto the biotoxins to help eliminate them. Generic binders like charcoal and clay won't work. So these binders were actually accidentally discovered by Dr. Richie Shoemaker. He had an outbreak of algae in the bay of the small town where he was a family practitioner and he just had an outbreak of really weird multi-system, multi-system symptom patients and he ended up treating one of his patients who was experiencing secretory diarrhea with an old school cholesterol med because he knew it would constipate them and then he was shocked to find that they actually started getting better from all of their other symptoms. That was actually how the binders were discovered. A very common side effect of the binders is constipation. Personally, I didn't experience that. I had the opposite, um, but I did experience extreme fatigue. The most commonly prescribed binder is called cholestyramine. If patients do not react to that well or handle that binder well, they may be prescribed well call. And if they don't tolerate that well, there are some supplemental options available. Um, they have a trade-off in that they're high in oxalates. So if you're oxalate sensitive, they may not be a good option for you. The final step of the protocol is VIP spray. This stands for vasoactive intestinal peptide spray, and it actually helps to correct some of the uh, errant genes that are turned on by the chronic inflammation caused by SIRS. Clearing this step is saying that you feel normal. It's the clinical diagnostic parameter is that patients after doing this VIP spray for a certain period of time will feel completely normal again. For me, and in retrospect, one of my biggest SIRS symptoms, I just didn't feel like myself. I couldn't think, my personality had completely changed. It was like I was living in a ghost of myself. So I'm really excited for this step. Personally, I haven't started it yet, but hopefully, fingers crossed, this month, I get to go on to the VIP spray and complete the protocol. Those are the three necessary steps to the protocol, but the rest of the steps will really be determined by your testing and your symptoms. 
Hey, it's Editing JC. I wanted to talk a little bit about the protocol order. So the reason that we do the protocol in the order that we do is so that you get the biggest bang for your buck. So a really good example of this is we take the binders before we do GI healing. Now you may think, well, if I did GI healing first, wouldn't I be better able to absorb the binders? But we know that SIRS lowers MSH, melanocyte stimulating hormone, which regulates the tight junctions of the gut. Taking the binders will help raise your MSH, making any of the efforts you make to heal your GI more effective. So the protocol is in the order that it is so that you have this domino effect of healing and you don't have to go back and repeat steps to move forward. This is the most efficient way to complete the Shoemaker protocol. A lot of people who have SIRS have reduced immune function and so they can have a lot of co-infections. One very common one is Marcon's, which is a staph infection in your nose. There are several different nasal sprays that can be used to treat this, EDTA, BEG, uh, there's also a xylitol spray, and if none of those work, you can also try ozone therapy to eliminate the Marcons. Next is correcting the anti-gliadin antibodies that are generated by SIRS. One weird downstream impact of SIRS is that it can produce anti-gliadin antibodies, which would make you present like you had celiac disease. A lot of people who are experiencing this will have things like gluten or dairy intolerance. Your provider may put you through a GI healing protocol in order to correct the anti-gliadin antibodies. Additionally, SIRS patients are typically recommended to eat a low amylose, low mold diet. Personally, I eat a carnivore diet and I find it very helpful in the process of my SIRS treatment. Your provider may need to help you correct hormones, especially sex hormones. A common symptom of SIRS is lowered testosterone and DHEA, so they may have you take supplements to help correct this. If you haven't seen my biotoxin video, I really recommend it. It talks through a lot of the downstream impact that biotoxins can cause and the corresponding symptoms. One is reduced antidiuretic hormones. A lot of patients who have reduced ADH will have extreme thirst, frequent urination, and experience random static shocks. I had this, I would be like in a grocery store pushing the cart and it would just be shocking me. And my family was like, what is wrong with you? Because none of them would be shocked. It's so weird. Other things your provider may pursue correcting are things like MMP9, VEGF, C3A, C4A, and TGF beta 1. If you watch my SIRS diagnosis video, you can actually get more background on some of those blood markers. It is important to note that these corrective actions, whether it's through supportive therapies or medications or even biohacking, are symptom management. It's not root cause healing, it's correcting the downstream impact and the corresponding symptoms of that root cause. Root cause healing is achieved by removing the exposure, taking the binders, and doing the VIP spray. Everything else is symptom management and correction. Some people are able to manage the downstream effects of SIRS through doing things like biohacking. For example, sunlight exposure can raise MSH. Lowered MSH is a hallmark symptom of SIRS. So while it may make them feel better, they'll have to continue doing that in order to feel better. Whereas if they do the SIRS treatment, they'll feel better long-term. They won't be dependent upon the biohack or the supportive therapy to always feel good. Another really important aspect of the SIRS healing process is limbic retraining. For people who are chronically ill, you develop actual like just wrong neural pathways because your body is constantly being triggered. Eventually you end up in fight or flight mode all of the time. Limbic retraining is a process of rewiring those neural pathways so that you have appropriate triggers and reactions to your outside environment. I need to do a video completely on this topic. It's fascinating. Um, so definitely subscribe if you're interested in seeing more of that from me. SIRS patients should expect to have lifelong maintenance, meaning if they are re-exposed, they'll have to readdress the SIRS protocol and eliminate the biotoxin again. There are some hacks when you're traveling or if you're going to an unknown environment that you can use to reduce the risk of exposure. The most important thing is to have a plan in place with your provider so you can get back onto the binders and possibly VIP spray.
When I was diagnosed with SIRS, I found the information really overwhelming. Luckily, I was diagnosed at the same time as my best friend, and we were just so grateful to have the experience of having each other through this diagnosis and starting the treatment protocol and just researching and learning all the information that we created a support community for people who are healing from SIRS. If you're interested in more emotional support or seeing our resources over there, I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description box down below. I hope you found this video helpful. If you or someone you love is dealing with SIRS, I just wish you so much love and peace and healing through this time. Thank you so much for watching today. I'll see you all in the next one. Okay, bye.